G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Saturday sort of evening here in Australia. Market's up a little bit, but oh, still under that 1.5. We're just waiting to see if there's going to be a big move sort of coming either this weekend or sort of early next week, because I just get the feeling like something's coming. Could be completely wrong, but just based on what the charts are showing me, I just get the feeling something is coming. You know, it may not be for a couple of weeks, but I just get the feeling that, again, something's coming fairly soon. All right, market is up 2.1% though, which is good, but still under that 1.5 trillion, which is not great. Volume, you know, only 800 and sort of 88 million only. <laughs> but yeah, we've definitely seen volume higher. All right, BTC dominance hanging just under that 44% and ETH dominance around that 17% and gas price is super cheap at the moment, nine. Again, we haven't really seen, you know, too many single digit uh, gas prices for a while. As we can see, Bitcoin 33,000 and, you know, things again, just chopping sort of all over the place. These are in the green one minute when it has a good 24 hours and then when it has a bad 24 hours, all of a sudden these can go into the red. So it really is all over the place. And again, you just look at the charts and that's how it's showing you sort of, you know, what's going on at the moment. Hence why I say, just be careful with the altcoins at the moment. It's, you know, if you believe in them and you're holding long term, then I guess it doesn't really matter. They're all on a discount at the moment. But, you know, we could be seeing some more downside. So again, nothing I say is financial advice, but that's just my personal opinion. I'm not diving too hard into the old coins at the moment, focusing on kind of the big plays. But that's me. you got to do what's right for you. Right, last 24 hours. Has anything done really well? Because we can see some movers there. Oh, Axie Infinity still going. This thing's on an absolute rip tear. So nice. Flow's doing well. EOS, Stacks, Terra, Engine, Decentraland, Compound. Uh, there's a few uh, coins with a nice move. But again, the market is generally up 2.1%. So we expect to see that. What about losses though? What hasn't done so well? Probably things that were pumping in the last sort of 24 hours prior to this. Right, so Comey, Elrond... Look, hardly anything, you know, has had any losses in the top 100, outside the top 100, could be completely different, but very, very minimal losses and a couple of nice gains there. So, again, are things looking, you know, more bullish? Oh, again, I say again a few times now, but anyway, this market cap was down at about 1.1, high 1.1, low 1.2 trillion. And we're getting up to 1.5 trillion, so that's good. But is this all a bit of a sucker's rally before it, you know, folds over and then goes back lower? That's what uh, I'm sort of thinking of at the moment. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but it's definitely something that's on my mind. So let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Right. So again, this Bollinger Band is super tight at the moment. When it gets this tight, there's usually a big move and something comes. I just can't tell you whether it's to the upside or the downside. What I can tell you is this bullish divergence has held because this has been getting higher and higher and it bounced off here, bounced off here. It looked like it was going to fall through and it bounced off and it's holding. And likewise, so that's on the RSI, on the MACD. This looked like it was going to cross over for a minute but it hasn't quite crossed over and it's just holding at the moment. And so I'm wondering to see if this is gonna be something like over here. We can see it rolled over, it looked like it was gonna cross and then it went on another move and that's where we had this pump here. Very hard to know. The weekend's not over, like it's still early in the weekend over in the States, so you know we could see a bit more of a sell-off and you know that sell-off may be the trigger that sends things, you know, to a new low. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I am just kind of mindful that that's possible. But, you know, most likely, if we don't set a new low, we're probably going to come back down and sort of test this $31,000, $30,000 mark because it'll still stay outside of this green line because we're holding this at the moment, which is good. I was hoping this would be a test and we would stay above it, but we fell below. But now we've bounced off it once, almost there, bounced off it twice and held just above it, you know, the wicks. And so that's what I'm looking for at the moment. Oops, sorry. flip that back. So can this hold is what I'm really looking for. Whew, I hope so. All right, look, there's not a whole lot of news going on there, but here's, again, maybe a little bit of hopium. So crypto whales have accumulated 200, uh, sorry, what is that? 2 trillion, uh, 2.2 trillion dollars worth of Bitcoin this week, says Antoine. Uh, 
oh, excuse me, says on-chain analyst uh, William Clemente. Obviously, you're probably going to be saying, well, why isn't that showing on the price? Because it's all OTC, and OTC does nothing uh, to the price, unfortunately. But what can be done, and I've said this before, to keep the price down, is you buy at OTC, because you get it cheaper than the spot price. Not a whole lot cheaper, but you get a little bit cheaper. So what you can do is continue to buy it on OTC and then sell it on the markets and keep dumping the price down so you can keep buying it cheaper. Because if you buy it uh, uh, OTC and then the price goes up, your OTC price will go up as well. So there's a whole lot of tricks of the trade that the really big players can do and then there's shorting markets and all sorts of other stuff. And my gut feeling is that's what's happening at the moment. Whales and big players are pushing the price down, buying a ton of it OTC, and then selling some of it uh, on the spot market to keep the price down. Now, I don't have anything to prove that, but these kind of things tells me that that's probably what's going on. Also, there's not a lot of excitement in the crypto market at the moment. You know, people aren't rushing out to buy Bitcoin because of the dump. And we're not talking about people who've been here for a while. You know, the, the true crypto heads like myself and probably you who are watching, you know, we're constantly buying really, no matter what, we're always buying. And our buying pressure is enough to kind of hold the market at a certain level, i.e. probably where it is right now, but not enough to push it higher. We need kind of new money, some new things to happen for the price to start really going up and most likely whales and big uh, players to stop pushing the price down. Because again, I firmly believe that is what's happening. But again, I don't have any like concrete proof. I don't know any of the whales in the institutions and they definitely haven't been talking to me saying, mate, this is what we're doing. But I just get the feeling like that is something that's happening. Now, all right, this is the news uh, really that I found interesting uh, and I'm a massive fan of Synthetics Network. So altcoin bulls pile into Synthetics, Axe Infinity, as we saw before, and EOS. Now, this might be a reason why they're piling, uh, piling into synthetics. So, Kane, he is an Australian guy. He is a developer uh, and co-founder of Synthetics Network. Just published a small update for some, uh, sorry, update. Some of you may have been waiting for. Everyone who's been in Synthetics Network has been waiting for this. So we go over here. Optimism launch announcement. So after many months of hard work and collaboration between Chainlink, Optimism and Synthetics, we are extremely excited to announce exchanges on the Optimism network will be enabled the week of July 26 with a final deployment date pending Spartan Council approval. So at the moment, Layer 2 type stuff, it's pretty much just the staking. You can stake on Layer 2, but you can't use the exchanges on Layer 2, which means the fees are all over the place. You know, if you want to try and uh, get cheap fees, they just can't be done. So it sounds like we're not far away, just a little bit over two weeks uh, for it to be enabled. But then again, it might take a few more days, maybe even another week or two after that. But this is massive news for synthetics because at the moment, you know, I'm lucky enough I can stake, but I can't do anything with kind of the money that I have because you get USD for staking, but I can't go and use it on any of the exchanges at the moment. So this is massive news. And I think this is really going to push Synthetics Network to you know, new highs. Now, we've just got to wait for the rest of the market to you know, kind of get a little bit excited. Now, in saying that, I'm not rushing out and buying Synthetics just yet. I'm not saying I wouldn't buy any, but I wouldn't be dumping too much money into it just in case the market goes lower. Again, I really am kind of waiting to see what Bitcoin's going to do. I get the feeling like it's going to do something in the next few days, maybe not this weekend. We could have a little bit of a sell-off, but I'm thinking in the next week or two, possibly next week, probably next week, there's going to be something happen. Because it's just, you know, you look at all this volatility, it's kind of been all over the place, and now it's just really, really quiet. There's not much going on. And usually something big happens from Bitcoin. Now, sometimes it can take weeks to even months for it to happen, but that's usually at the bottom of a bear market. I don't feel like we're at the bottom of a bear market. I don't feel like we're in a bear market for that matter. But look, in the next couple of days to maybe week or so, we're probably going to have a good indication. As long as Bitcoin keeps traveling sideways, then this may have been the entire bear market, which would be the quickest bear market in all of history. 
uh, that had, you know, managed to hit the peak on the 14th of April and then hit the bottom uh, on the 22nd of June. That would literally be the quickest bear market ever. But if we travel sideways for a while, then I don't consider it to be a bear market. I consider it to just be a correction. And then hopefully we're going to start to push up and go for those levels that people are expecting of 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 and so on. I don't know about the 300,000. I'm somewhat skeptical on the 200,000. I think 100, 150,000 is most likely. Exactly whereabouts it sort of happens in there. Not exactly sure. You know what the final mark is. Look. I would love for Plan B's uh, thing to come true where it's 288000 That would be amazing. I just don't know if it's going to happen. Now that the big players are here and everyone knows about Plan B's chart and all the rest of it, I think they're going to make sure that it doesn't get to those prices. And yeah, that, that's a shame, but also, you know, it is what it is. It just means the longer it's kind of suppressed, the more it's going to pump when it finally does pump. Because even the big players can only suppress Bitcoin for so long and then they simply need to let it pump, you know, to take some profits and all the rest of it. Again, for me, I just continue to buy Bitcoin. So I'm a long-term investor, not a day trader. So the day-to-day -day stuff doesn't worry too much. Likewise, if Bitcoin does take a big, massive, you know, you know, downturn from here and again goes down to maybe even 20,000, you know, 15,000, whatever it is, I'm just going to keep buying it. Simple as that. It doesn't really matter what price it goes to other than when it's setting new all-time highs. When it's setting new all-time highs, I, I put less money into it because I know we're probably closer to a correction than we are to, you know, yeah, making unbelievable uh, sort of money. You're probably more going to lose some money, at least in the short term. Long term, different story. But hence why I put more money into Bitcoin and most coin, uh, not most, all coins really. If something's at a new all, all, all time high, I'm not putting a lot of money into it. I'm basically letting it ride and starting to take profits from there. But that's my strategy. Again, you got to work it out for yourself. Uh, I'm not here to give you financial advice. I'm just here to talk about crypto uh, and let you know my thoughts, my personal preferences and all the rest of it. All right, that's it from me. Not a whole lot going on. Obviously, the weekend's here. Massive news about Synthetics Network. I can't wait to finally be able to use the exchanges. Uh, I used the old exchange a long, long time ago. Uh, but again, this whole layer two, uh, layer one thing kind of yeah, made it really hard, particularly when the gas fees were really, really high. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully, you're on that gain train at the moment. And I'll see you next time.